Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're here at the Niti Aayog in conversation with the Vice Chairman Arvind Panagaria on the three-year action agenda that's been put forward by the Niti Aayog. Sir, thanks very much for joining us on CNBC My TV pleasure, 18. Always. It's a 180-page report with recommendations across all sectors from what you should do on defense, education, healthcare, real estate, job creation. Uh, I know that this has been something that has been prepared after consultation with various departments, both at the central level as well as the state level. But like the economic survey, is this merely going to be, you know, recommendations or ideas that the NITI has put forward or are we actually going to see the government move along these lines? Uh, no, no. In fact, let me uh, say here that, uh, well, first of all, it is extensive and uh, uh, our team including all the advisors, a uh, lot of the youngsters we have uh, hired recently, myself, have been working hard. Last six to seven months I have been working on it myself uh, very intensively. So uh, we, we have thought through a lot on this. Uh, but one big difference between the economic survey and this document is that this document is the, res is the result of consultations with, with yes. virtually all stakeholders. Yes. Uh, we have consulted multiple times with states uh, at the level of the chief minister. I sent letters to the chief ministers, uh, chief secretaries. Then teams also went to the states. So there was a lot of discussion there. Uh, ministries were discussed uh, extensively here. And then, of course, there was a wide, uh, much wider uh, discussion with the industry chambers, the uh, 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 voluntary organizations, the uh, experts in the fields, and all. A lot of written inputs were taken in. And so, so we've been working hard, and, and so. This document has to be seen uh, certainly as a, a lot more. Uh, uh, so, a lot more serious. Sort of road, so roadmap, are, yeah, roadmap. I mean, you know, again, of course, the government will have to make decisions on what gets priority, what doesn't get priority. But mm -hmm. there is general kind of uh, 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 sentiment in uh, 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 for the kinds of things that we have been recommending. You talk about defence capex being seen at one lakh seventy-two thousand crores in FI. 20 versus 95,000 crores in FI16. Railway capex at 1.12 lakh crores in FI20 versus 40,000 crores in FI16. Road development 86,000 crores versus 31,000 crores in FI16. Similarly, in education, health expenditure, uh, food subsidies, you've, you've factored in significant increases. Uh, is this going to be proportionate to the kind of increase that you expect in taxes? Because you've been a little conservative on the tax front and, or perhaps realistic. We've been quite realistic actually because you know what we are forecasting in terms of the tax revenues and other revenues uh, is below what had happened from 2003-04 to 8-9. Uh, it's a bit above what uh, happened after 12-13. That was a very slow period and very unusual period with uh, the CPI going one way and the wholesale price index actually collapsing. But now the CPI wholesale price index are together uh, and uh, the GDP deflator, etc., will show greater stability and all. So I think, you know, we are just about right in our predictions. And the increases in the expenditures that you name actually uh, are based largely on the incremental revenue. We, uh, uh, you know, by about seven, by uh, 1920, you begin to get about uh, 7 lakh crores or 7 trillion rupees extra above the 16, 17 uh, uh, revenues. Uh, and so that is what gives you the room to, because that additional uh, tax revenue, you can then start changing the composition. Mm. So we have actually suggested a, a, a very significant shift in, in the composition of the expenditures without reducing any of the, you know, so like subsidies, etc. Mm. You're kept at at least the level at which they are they currently. currently are. Yeah. Uh, let me then ask you about one of the pressing matters, uh, and that is on the NPA resolution. And this is something that you've uh, talked about as well, and it's part of, uh, in a sense, broadly your vision uh, document. You say that the government needs to play an active role in the auction of NPAs. The creditor banks should be allowed to buy 80% of share in the asset during the auction of NPA assets, and that the government should support the auction of assets of NPAs to private ARCs. We've still awaiting clarity from the government and the Reserve Bank on this new NPA resolution mechanism or policy. We don't know whether it will entail any amendments to any legislation, whether it's the Banking Regulation Act or the Reserve Bank Act. Uh, do you believe that the ideas that you've suggested may be the way forward? 
Well, we certainly think that this is a one, one uh, reasonable kind of a proposal, practical proposal, because it also solves some of the problems. Uh, at 20 percent, it gives enough skin in the game for the buyer of the asset uh, or the you know whoever is investing 20 percent in the asset. Uh, at the same time, uh, the 80 percent ownership remains that of the bank. And therefore, the allegations that you know you gave away the asset at uh, uh, very prices. low price or throwaway yeah. price uh, cannot be leveled because, in any case, if the asset resolves uh, at uh, close to its par value, at its face value, then 80% of it will come back to the uh, 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 bank. So, so it, it, it alleviates the, those mm. kinds of fears also. So, if you're saying that this is the practical solution to being able to address the NPA crisis that we're faced with today, what has the response been from the government? Uh, because you've been consulting with various stakeholders. Are there buyers or takers for this uh, plan and this proposal? We shall see. We shall see. Uh, 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 you know, uh, right now, I mean, as you know, this is this is not a matter that uh, Niti Aayog, in, in in practical terms, kind of. Uh, uh, takes up. Uh, uh, in this, our role is very much advisory, uh, and we have suggested this one possible way to resolve. But there are also in the discussion uh, alternative proposals and alternative uh, uh, routes to uh, clearing the NPS. So, uh, largely, the, the, uh, on the ground, it is the finance ministry. DFS, Department of Financial Services, uh, on the one hand, and there is a Bank of India on the other who have to ultimately uh, uh, do But the when resolution. you floated this proposal or this idea uh, on how you could address this issue, what has been the, uh, the reaction that's come in from the Finance Ministry? Have they raised any concerns about it? Are they in favor? I mean, an eventual decision is later, but what's been the feedback no, to this your is, proposal? Now, this is, this is a more specific version of what, uh, of what I had uh, discussions on. But, but there is general sense that uh, that perhaps uh, the, the, the route through uh, uh, at least in, in part of the in, in, in a large part of the NPA is actually the route through uh, the purchases uh, in some form by the private ARC is, is a feasible route. Uh, even if you go back to the uh, the, the proposal that we Acharya. The, the new uh, yes, uh, RBI, deputy, RBI governor. deputy governor had floated. That also had, you know, the, uh, how exactly, uh, uh, what is the modus operandi of, of this, how you do it, uh, he may have deferred on it. But, but basically, you know, when he talked about many of the assets uh, which can be revived, uh, when he talked of those assets, uh, he had also proposed that uh, we can do it through the uh, private buyers of the assets. Okay. Let me move on and talk to you about one of the other sectors that uh, you've given your specific recommendations for. Uh, under the urban development heading, you talk about the need to bring down land, land prices to make the affordable housing scheme uh, through the supply of urban land a reality. You talk about flexible conversion of rules from one use to another. You talk about the release of land held by sick units. Uh, this has been something that we've heard a lot about, but do you believe that this is now actively going to be something that the government moves quickly on, this business of sick units being able to part with their land towards affordable housing? Yeah. So now actually, you know, uh, movement is underway. Uh, certainly, uh, you, you know, situation is not what it was three years ago. Uh, we have been finally, despite skepticism from all quarters, actually, we are seeing the closure of the sick units uh, and the land will then be put up. We have suggested actually more holistic approach that meaning that in the all other fronts on which also we ought to try to work. Uh, a conversion of land I think is also an issue on which we need to make progress. Uh, it's a state's issue clearly, yeah. you know, it's a issue of the states but we would engage, uh, we have engaged with the states also. Uh, it's not a recommendation uh, in, in your document but it's an observation uh, that the Land Acquisition Act uh, and amendments to the Land Acquisition Act is something that should be revisited. Uh, is this something that you're now going to press for? So no. Because I remember in your press conference you talked about, uh, you know, there is space now for legislative change and perhaps even constitutional change. Yeah, but I think still, uh, as you know very well, uh, 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 you know, uh, this land acquisition issue still cannot be handled at the center because in the Rajya Sabha, yeah. the, the government still lacks the votes. Uh, so I, I think when I say revisit Post 2019. It, but even, see, because it, at least the composition not, hasn't yet changed, or post-2019 perhaps so. 
uh, uh, I mean, you know, once there are votes, then of course uh, it, it can be revisited. Uh, 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 what I'm suggesting here, what we are observing here is that, look, you know, at least two states uh, have actually amended the Land Acquisition Act. Tamil and Nadu and Rajasthan. And Gujarat. Gujarat. Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. Gujarat. Yeah. And, and so I think there, is, there are at least two different models that have been pioneered by the two states and perhaps the other states could look at these you know so if the central government has given permission to both yeah. of these then similar permissions to the other states become quite uh, possible and feasible so i think this is in a way uh, uh, for discussion with the states that you know they may want to move faster because ultimately remember that you know particularly when you talk of affordable housing mm. who benefits it's the residents of the states sure. and so states have uh, a lot of vested interest in doing it uh, you know you, you just I, I want to go back to your previous answer where you talked about the closure of sick units and you said that there was skepticism but it's finally starting to happen on strategic divestments and you know uh, I can I can sense from from your body language that there is a degree of frustration on on why it hasn't moved no, no, some frustration. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm disappointed. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that it has not moved uh, because we had actually moved quite a while back, uh, and some of these. What is what is holding it up? You believe? So, no, I don't really know. I mean, you know, the ultimately it's done by the DIPM, uh, the D Department of Investment and uh, Public Asset Management, uh, and what exactly has held this up? Uh, I, I see some movement forward uh, that you know there have been advertisements and out and all. Uh, uh, for uh, moving this uh, process forward, uh, but uh, actual sales have not happened.